guys, it's Lisa back with another video for you for Lisa Wise Designs. And today we're going to be continuing our series on this album, The Best Year Ever Mini Album. Uh, today is part five. And where we left off yesterday is we had actually made our album from scratch, from chipboard, from Tyvek, from um, cardstock. And we made this element that's going to go on the front as a belly band. And we also made this element out of Tyvek and some washi tape. So if you've missed any part of this series, just go back a couple of videos or you can uh, find a playlist linked below uh, for this total album. Uh, the kits did sell out on the first day, but the tutorial is available where you can download um, and print all the directions or you can just follow along on your computer on the PDF. So we are going to get started back on page 18. I did a little skipping around the last video, forgive me. So we're going to be starting back um, in the middle of 18 and I'm going to move this little tie back combo piece out of the way and we're going to be dealing with this. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down on the front of the album and then I'm going to put my cardstock I'm going to slide it underneath because I want to cover up these little hinges that's going to be holding it down. So that's why I'm doing that. So again, in the middle of page 18, you're going to grab a ruler and a pencil. We're going to draw a pencil line two and a half inches from the right side of our front cover. So I'm going to kind of open it up gently. I don't want to crack anything, but I'm going to make a mark. Doesn't have to be exact, but this is kind of where I landed on mine. I wanted it to be about two and a half inches from the right side. And then I'm going to take off my tape liner. And then I'm going to line it up. The right side of this little belly band piece is going to line up with that uh, marking. You can see it's kind of in the center here. So let's go ahead and do that. We already had tape on there. Let me grab my pokey tool somewhere. There we go. It's been a day, it's a day or two since I crafted, so I gotta find everything again, get my glue working, get my mind working again here. There we go. I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? It's like once you get started on a project, you wanna keep going and going when you're in the groove. Because then when you take a day or two off, you're kinda like, what? What was I doing? So I'm trying to line up the right side of this piece with that pencil line and then I want to make sure I get it top to bottom because it should be exactly the same size as um, the cover piece. Let's try and find my bone folder here. I'm just going to do really good burnish on the ends and this piece is actually going to be a little bit big for the um, the booklet we're going to put in there so we can always come back in and put a little glue anywhere on the edges underneath to make it hold tighter if we want to. So never be afraid to do that if you've got a piece that won't stay inside. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here on this. This one is done. I came back and put a little bit of glue here underneath the uh, rainbow because I wanted it to be a little bit tighter to hold this. See how it won't go all the way up to the top now? On this one that's just my example okay so oh it's so cute it's looking so good so let's go ahead and mat the front and the back of this so if you're following along with me I'm at the bottom of 18 and it gives you your dimensions here and the papers to pull what I did is I grabbed the paper that has got all the little hearts on it I grabbed the holly paper and the paper with the dots here. So I have three sheets of paper, and out of those three sheets, I am making the front and the back cover. And then this is what I had left over from those three sheets. I just had these two little pieces here left over. So the cutting guide for these three, for the front is on the bottom of 18, and you're using the same paper. So go ahead and cut the top of 20. Sorry, I skipped around there, but you know, when you're designing it, you try to have kind of feel your way through it. So I cut out the bottom of 18 and using those same three pieces of paper, I cut out the top of 20. So that's where I've got these from. So I'm gonna kind of slide out of the way. And what I like to do is I have some scotch tape off to the side here. And the front is going to be 
the the this one <laughs> the this one it's going to be my hearts on the top and then these dots on the bottom so what I wanted to do to make sure I get it centered on my um, on my cover right I just took the extra step of flipping those over and taping them together I just wanted to be sure it's just easier for me when I have the whole sheet of paper to center that now, you know, on my cover as then to center this side to side, this side to side, you know, top and bottom, and then I might be off on the bottom, you know, you know what I'm saying. So I just tape that together and then I am going to glue this little piece of holly right where those connect. So it kind of gives it a finished look. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, okay. It is really cold here. You have to tell me what it's like in your part of the country. I am freezing today, and I am in central Alabama, and um, I guess it's time for cold weather, but I don't know. It's just a little too cold today for my liking. I was trying to start the habit of going for an afternoon walk, and I sure missed it yesterday because it was in the 30s. All right, so here's the front piece we've got here. And I hope I did it kind of straight. I did not, because <laughs> I can't get my head over because of the camera, but I'm going to live with it. It'll be okay. So since I already cut this out, I'm gonna do the same thing. So the back cover is gonna start with the dots at the top and this holly at the bottom. And I'm gonna flip it over again, get a couple of pieces of scotch tape. I was just checking to make sure, you know, there's no, um, horizontal or vertical pattern that I wanted to make sure I kept. So I have this, and then I'm going to put this little quarter of an inch strip of hearts on the center again. This time I'm gonna to try to get it actually <laughs> centered. Do a little bit better job here of centering it, getting it a little straighter. There we go, here. I kind of use the dots as a guide, but <clears throat> look at there. There we go. Alrighty. So here is my front and back cover. So you can see one's a little longer than the other because I was just using what the paper allowed me to use. Once I cut the front how I wanted it, I just used what was kind of left over in the back. So let's see where we are. I am back here now at the top of 19. I'm going to grab my album and we'll grab the piece that we just made, the one with the hearts at the top here. And first thing I'm going to do is dry fit it and see how it fits and how it looks. And the first thing we have to do before we do anything else is we got to round those corners. So grab your corner rounder, only round the corners on the right side to match up with how we rounded the corners on um, the actual album itself. So now that makes sense. See, now that lines up together. And see now how it's one piece, you can kind of go back and forth and kind of get it centered the way you want to center it without having to deal with all these other little pieces. Now there is gonna be this big gap over here and there is supposed to be because this is where we're gonna put this when we're all said and done. So. Let me see. Yes, yeah, so what you want to do is center it top and bottom and get about an eighth of an inch on the right side and you're gonna have a pretty big gap there because eventually we're gonna come and do this piece to hide that gap. So as you can see, I have really tried to stretch this paper and use paper that is smaller than the actual album. And a lot of that is by design. I kind of wanted to stretch myself and show you how if you're making something and your pieces are too small not to be despondent over that just take it with a grain of salt and piece it together and just do uh do the album with what you have i can't talk too much because i don't want this dry come on come on come on shift shift one more time for me there we go I would say close enough. It may not be perfect, 
but it looks pretty good to me. Oops, I'm gonna knock over my glue here. Gotta make sure, especially on the edges, that everything feels good there. And so I'm still on 19. So I'm just gonna turn my book here just to make it easier to work with. And now see how this is off a little bit. This is a little bit lower than this. It's not gonna matter because we're gonna cover it up. And even though you can see it a little here, it does not matter. So I'm gonna turn the back of this over and I'm gonna make sure I put some glue, good glue coverage, especially on the ends. And this tie bag, like I say, is a little slippery. My daddy likes to say slickery. <laughs> so this should line up exactly. I am, we cut it to eight and a half, which is what the, the binder is or the album and so I'm just taking my time to butt this up against that red piece as best I can. Get that into place and just give a little bit of burnishing here. So using this black um, chipboard, it really gives you the freedom to do some different things where you don't feel like you have to cover every little bit up because this is smooth. You know, if you have a little bit that's not smooth, like I was telling you, you could use a nail file since it's really smooth and black. You don't have to cover every piece of that in cardstock. And I kind of like the way this looks. Okay. So mine needs a little bit of glue on the edges. I can see it kind of puckering up a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue, try not to get too much because I don't want it to seep out but this is gonna be handled a lot here on the front, so I'm gonna make sure that's got a good stick. Okay, wiping any extra glue off there. I think I need, yeah, I still got a couple of places, so obviously I didn't get enough glue on the edges, but that is easily fixed. Okay, look how cute our cover is. Isn't this a great use of chipboard pieces i absolutely love it and i really think this is a, a really good use of a leftover tie back and um washi tape i couldn't think of the name of it all right so flipping this over let's do the other side we already made it with the same paper so let me see where we are in our instructions all right so now we're at the top of 20. we're going to do the same type um recipe here but going you know toward the left hand side so I've got my corner rounder and I'm going to corner around the left side of this one have you noticed how little paper that you have left I mean we really are down to the nitty-gritty right just a few sheets we're going to use just about every piece of it left I think this is the only one that I did not cut into on my sample but I'm probably going to cut into it I'm probably going to cut into it with this one. So I think I want to do something a little bit different on the spine. So I'm just going to line this up like I did on the front, but this time on the left side, have it about the, you know, centering top to bottom, and then about an eighth of an inch here. And you can see what it's supposed to look like on 20, but I'll show it here also. So I've got the same thing. I just did a little bit of something different here. I used pattern paper that I pieced together here and here and I had a gap and then I used a die cut to cover that gap up. Oh, I got a tag trying to escape here. So let's glue this down first. This one might be a little easier to glue since we're not having to go underneath that belly band that was on the front one. Make sure I get my ends well. Like I've said before, this glue gives you a, 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 just a tiny bit more time than the other one that I was using, but still not a whole lot of extra. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. I think I missed my opportunity and want to add more glue. That's okay. I'll let it get dry because I was talking. left hand side best I can oh it's still not there we go I think that's straighter than I had it but that is okay if it doesn't line up here totally sorry I'm out of frame I think I need to bring my camera forward sorry guys let me do this there we go so once again we're going to cover this up so 
This is one reason I started doing this technique too, is see, I'm not exactly straight here, but no one's ever going to notice that because we're gonna cover it up and it's harder to see here on the black. So now well, I'm still at the top of 20 and it tells you from this to cut half an inch, a half inch stripe out of this to, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get in a minute, to cut a half an inch out of this striped paper. So I'm gonna go over here the half of an inch and cut it. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this at the three and a quarter mark. And I'll show you what we're going to do. That's what I'm saying. See, this paper is not quite long enough to uh, mat this cover. Sorry, I'm like cleaning up around me and I can't talk. So then what I decided to do was just cut it in half because I knew I was going to put a uh, die cut here anyway. I'm putting the smaller piece at the bottom. Flip this around like so. Doesn't really matter, but that's kind of how I want to do. And then I will um, take this and butt it up against the red. This too, I'm going all the way top and bottom. And then this is not going to matter because we're going to put a piece of ephemera on it. And I chose this big one that says best year ever. You can use any one you want to because there's some that's left over. Like, I don't think I used this one or this one. I used it in my first sample, but I haven't used it yet. So there's lots of things. Isn't that cute? That you can pick what's left or what you want to use. And here we go. Sorry. Put my mess back. Here we go. All right. So... Here. I had a little piece of that black tie back that was showing. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm going over that and butting it up against the red. That's what I'm going to do since I had a little bit of tie back when we put this together that was showing. And I could have trimmed it before I put it on here, but I didn't. So that's okay. This is what I'm going to do to try to make it look a little better. Just like this. And the way I came up with how I trimmed this down when I gave you that measurement is because I knew right here where all this met, I was gonna put some type of die cut. So I went ahead and cut that down where all these met and then I saw how long this would be toward the end. And then I started looking through my die cut. So I really didn't have to use one definitely this big if I hadn't wanted to. But I wanted to use that one anyway. Cause it is the best year ever even though I think I finally have decided that I'm going to print uh, grandbaby pictures of her. Um, like I said, I can't glue and talk at the same time. And she's now a year old. So I think I'm just going to go back and find one photo from this year, from every month that I loved, my favorite photo of the month, and put it in the book. And then I'll do the same thing for the next year. And so I'll have at least seven years worth, sometimes eight, depending on the months, where there'll be like one January picture, you know, from when she was first born until she was seven or eight years old. Well, that be so cute. I love to see how this is gonna work out. And then no one's the wiser that we had to piece that together. Isn't that cute? I love this. And you'll have to let me know if you're enjoying seeing some of these different techniques because it can be exasperating if you look at that and say, well, my page is not long enough. How am I gonna do my cover? See, my pa the paper here was not long enough, but we pieced it together and made it look like that's exactly how we wanted it to turn out. And this too. But the only thing that we couldn't piece together really was the spine, and that's why you got a red sheet in your kit. I love it! I might like the back, almost good as the front. Okay, so then I kind of skipped over in the middle of 20 and just went ahead and worked on my spine. I wanted it to have these cute stickers on here, best year ever. So it does say best year ever here, here, and then when you first open it. So if you don't like that, if having it in so many places, then you can use a different die cut or ephemera piece here. And you might could even use something different here. But I liked it. I liked having the three different ones. I don't think um, 
don't think anybody's gonna care whoever <laughs> looks at this. So, in my instructions, we used a, a leftover sheet of black. So these bigger pieces that are five inches, let's not cut into those, because we're gonna do some booklets. But some of these thinner ones, yeah, that's long enough. Use this. And we're going to need, I'm in the middle of 20, we're gonna need one and three quarters by eight and a half. I think it's already eight and a half. No, this one's not. Out of the way. So, eight and a half. One and three quarters. So this is where I'm going to build. I'm gonna check my, my math here. Yeah, this is where I'm going to build here with the stickers. Okay, I really would like to have more color here after I did it the first time. And I'm pretty sure I do not cut into this sheet of paper. So I'm just gonna kind of look and see if I piece this together if I would like it or not, or if I'm just gonna continue with the black. Maybe I'll just do it this way. So, grab your stickers here, and let me show you again. Oh, this is in the middle of 20. You have a picture of this in the middle of page 20, but we're gonna use these stickers, best year ever. And then we're gonna use just a couple of spacer stickers, like you can pick star or heart, anything like that. And the way I did this is I started with best. Okay, take a look at it and make sure you're poking out the center holes of the B. Make sure I get those out of here. And I did on this black piece at the as tippity top as I could get, top and left where it still looks good, but as close as I could get, because this sticker is gonna take up all the space. So that's what I did here. And then I did, oh, I got a piece of the sticker on my finger. I go to the Ever sticker, the one on the extreme right. We're gonna come back and do year, but okay, I've got all the middle pieces out because there's not one in the R. And I also did this at the tippity top on the right side. I will have to turn my paper though so I can get to it without putting my head in the camera. But this is gonna go at the top to the extreme left side like so. And then year is gonna go in the center bottom. So this makes it easy to see kind of how much room you've got to work with. So I'm gonna poke out little pieces out of the A and out of the E. Yeah, so I want to stick to the back. Come on, I don't need any lumpies. Come out. There we go. So I've already done this for you, so you don't have to worry about uh, figuring out how long a piece that you need or if it's going to work. So then you just center that as best you can between best and ever and go to the bottom with your year. Just like this. So now you can decorate it however you want. If you want to put spacers here, which is what I did. So I love hearts. So I used a heart. And then just to do something different, you could use a star. There's also flowers. You can add things together. Oh, wouldn't this be cute if you really loved candy corn? That would be cute. Or holly. But I just kept mine simple. And I put a star here to kind of make a spacer between the words and a heart here as a spacer between the words. And so there's a little bit more room here if you want to put something here or at the bottom, but I was good with that. Well, I say that, but look at this little holly piece. It's so cute. I wonder if I can get away with this. Oh, I love it. Okay. Well, here I go. See, I'm going to over decorate it probably. I wonder if I can get something here. It's gotta be small. Maybe a leaf. Gotta be really small to go under that B. Probably should have used that little piece of holly on that side. Let me, let's see what this leaf looks like. 
even if I overlap, I still think that's really cute. And then it will be cute to put some here, but I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to step away, step away. <laughs> All right, so back to the album. And then we're just going to glue it to the center here of the spine. So I did decide the first time around I put a saying on it once I had adhered it to the spine. I thought it needed something, but this time I put holly. So we may not do that, but let's see. I'm trying to make sure I'm pretty much centered. I don't want my paper to crack, so I'm trying not to over open my album here there we go so see on this one i put i just kind of overlap the bottom with another saying sticker there all right we have got this almost done so let's open her up and let's start working on the inside of the cover so i'm at the bottom of page 20 you'll see a picture there i wanted to use this really cute best year ever but of course you know it's too small for the page so I pieced it together along with this dot paper and I went ahead and did the math for you and it's at the uh, the bottom of 20 but we will go over and do it together so you're starting with a six by eight piece so I'm gonna cut half an inch of this piece off the top all right and a half an inch off the bottom and now we're down to a seven inch piece of paper. I'm gonna keep these just in case I need them because the back has got this really cute pattern on it. And then I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch off the left side. All right, there we go. So now we should have a piece of paper that's seven inches tall by five and three quarters wide. So get our dot paper. We're gonna cut two strips that's three quarters of an inch. All right, three quarters, three quarters. And then we want those to be seven inches. All right, so seven inches. And this is how we're gonna piece all this together to make the front of the album. And I will show you Oh, there's a picture at the bottom of 20, but I will show it to you in just a second. So those were our three quarters by seven. Then we need two strips that's three quarters by seven and a quarter. So more three quarters strips. Sorry, I know you can't see the bottom of my, of my cutting uh, trimmer. I'll have to do better, but this one is a little longer. These are seven and a quarter. I put my little longer ones off to the side. <laughs> okay. All right, so. Okay, so the seven inch ones goes on the side, just like this. So that they match up here. One of mine might be too long because it doesn't seem to want to match. Yeah, it's not seven inches, so let me. What did I do to you? You're a little long. Oh, please. <laughs> Come on. No? Well. Maybe it's this paper. I think I cut my paper a little short. That's okay. Yeah, I think I cut my best year ever paper a tiny bit too short when I was jabbering, but that's all right. I will trim it down in just a second. So I'm going to flip this over for the best year ever, and on the sides, I'm going to be putting these seven inch uh, pieces, and they should exactly match. They should be the same height. Like I said, if mine's a little bit off, I'll just trim it when I'm done here. Okay. So 
So dot paper does not have a oh, like a vertical, horizontal, really uh, pattern that I need to follow. So I'm not going to worry about that. All right. So I'm off a smidge. So never fear. I'm going to line this bad boy up and trim her down. I'm going to use the May May technique of sinking my blade and trimming this down. There we go. And one more time. Sorry you had to sit through that, but I have got mine now perfectly perfect. <laughs> so now the other ones that were seven and a quarter should now line up at the top and the bottom. And I seem to have got that one correct. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing. And like I said, if you find this overkill of having to tape the paper, you can go directly to the binder and glue these pieces in. I just find it very difficult, my tape here, I find it difficult to uh, to line it up without having the whole sheet of paper. And I just rather do this little extra step because it stresses me out the least having to do that. So my tape is hanging over a little bit, so I'm gonna tear that off or push it down. One or the other. There we go. So isn't that cute? A way of doing that. So here's the front of the book. So we open it up and it's gonna go right here. So all we have to do now is we want to make sure that we round our corners again to match. So I'm rounding the left-handed side. Okay, use the wrong size here. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, so now this is much easier to see to line up top to bottom, left to right in the center and glue down. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple more pieces of tape just to make it easier when I'm flipping and flopping this thing. There we go. Now, I also find with this this new glue that I can leave the cap off a little bit longer and it doesn't stop up quite as much. Or maybe it's just me, but it seems like the other one when I was, anytime I'd walk away from it, for even for just a few seconds, it would stop up. Okay. Now I'm gonna start over here on the left side, hold it up, and I think that's gonna work for me a little easier, yeah and then work my way here. The only thing you wanna do is just make sure you're not getting over into your score line. And we've got plenty of room not to do that here. Go. Oh, sorry, my phone's ringing. I'll turn that off. Okay. Looks good. If I would stay in frame, <laughs> maybe I need to zoom out. Are you enjoying this? I'm enjoying it. I love how this looks. So now let's work on the back ones. You can see here, this one's gonna have the snowflakes and then we're gonna use that same piece of paper we cut just a little strip off on the stripes and then we're going uh, to put a piece between that. And um, this one though, we're going to uh, line up a little differently. The other ones, you know, we put the two large pieces together and then put this one on top. Well, this one I wanted it to be smooth because this was gonna go on the top of it. So I put, you know, one piece, this piece, and that piece, and then and taped it all together. Hope that makes sense. Okay, here we go. Now, let's see where we are here. We're at the top of page 21. So this sheet that we had already made one cut off of it. Now we're gonna cut it. We made a cut this way and used it long ways. Then we're gonna cut it this way and use it this way. So we need two and a quarter. Yep. By seven and a quarter. It's really windy today. I can, can hear the uh, thing on my front door keeps smacking. All right, 
So next we're going to use the snowflake paper. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Six by seven and a quarter. So we're going to have to do seven and a quarter. This way. Oh, it's already by six. There we go. So we have those two pieces here. Okay, and then we need something to bridge the gap. So this is kind of what we have left, other than the little slivers we've already cut. And I thought this would be fun to use, cut a little sliver of this so you had like the half the pink, the half the blue. I thought that was kind of fun. So that's what I did here. I cut a quarter of an inch, yes, a quarter of an inch on the sheet. And then it needed to be uh, seven and a quarter like everything else. So how much would I have to take off if I want it to be center? Because it's, it's eight inches, right? Yes, I want it to be seven and a quarter. So three quarters has got to come off. So does that mean and three eighths? One, two, three, one, two, three, yes. So I'm going to take three eighths off of each side. It doesn't have to be exact. You can cut three eighths off or something approximation and then turn it around. Just make sure you're getting seven and a quarter total so that it will match up. There we go. Just going to make sure that that now matches and we are good to go. Like I say on this one, I did the measurements here. If you put them all three together, that you should have your eight and a half. Yes, with the other one, I didn't do that. So flip these over. There's my snowman. That was such cute paper. This was a really cute paper pack. I just say bravo to whoever came up with this idea of getting a paper pack of 12 pieces where, you know, one piece was each month. Because I really enjoyed using it. Okay. Make sure it goes in. That looks right here. It looks funky from the back, but it looks right. A little piece of tape overhang in my way. Awesome. I'm going to grab our book. So once again, this is how this is going to work. And we just need to round the corners this time on the right side. Let me use the right side, the correct side of my, of my corner rounder. Put this here. Yep, love it. So really what we've got left to do is we're going to need to put the pocket on this. We're going to need to make the three little pieces that go into the pocket. And we're going to need to make a, at least a couple so I can show you how to make the uh, photo inserts and put our pages in. So we may go one more session. And I was really wanting to go ahead and put a couple of photos in here anyway to do a session. So going to be six part series. Hope that's okay with everyone. I know I like watching crafters. Didn't doesn't hurt my feelings if it takes more than uh, you know four or five videos. Awesome. I love this. Love it, love it, love it. So if you have the kit you will have in there a you know four by eight tag we haven't used a library card and you also have this um calling it a clear pocket. This is what it looks like if anyone's looking for them. I got mine at Office Depot. They're like packs of 50 or 100. There's a ton of them in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, it's already got sticky on it, so we're going to take the liner off the bottom 
um, all the way across in a small section. We're going to line it up and then we're going to flip it and take the rest of it off. So I'm working on the bottom because so here's the pocket opening. So I'm going from the bottom and I'm just working a little bit of the tape liner off all the way across the bottom. All right, so just like that, if you can see. Yeah, you can see that pretty good. So I wouldn't take all of it off at once. And then I'd kind of play around and see where I wanted this to go. Now I just put mine in the center and I put it flush with the bottom of the pattern paper is how I put mine on. I just kind of eyeballed center and then I just lined it up flush with the pattern paper. And I gotta hold my breath here to get it on right. Oh, see it popped up. No, 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 no. There we go. Okay, so then I push that little section on pretty good with my fingers. Then I fold this back and take the rest of this off and I'm putting my finger here where it doesn't just flop down. All right. So I just wanna make sure that I get it on here straight, just kind of starting from the bottom, just kind of work up. Pushing down on it a little bit at the time. No air bubbles. Okay, and then starting at the bottom, just pushing up. Bracing that on really good. Okay, and now we've got this really cute pocket here. If you can see that, yeah. It's just shiny for right now. Okay, so next we wanna make some booklets and we want to make the inserts that go inside of that pocket. So I did wanna point out one thing. At the top of page 23, I realized that I have a typo it says five by seven booklet. It should actually be for four by six photos. There is one for five by seven, and that's on page 21, but the one on page 23 is for four by six. Sorry about that. I probably was copying and pasting and didn't, didn't realize it when I was putting it in there. So, what should we do? Should we make booklets first and go in order, or should we skip around <laughs> and do some tags. I really want to work on the tags, so forgive me. Let's skip around a little bit. On the next video, we'll come back and make the booklets, and uh, and I'll put some photos in there and do a walkthrough. Oh, we also got to put our finished pages in here. <laughs> yeah, that would be important. Let's go and work here on some of these. Here's that four by eight tag, and here is this really cute library pocket. So for the library pocket, I like to put these in my my albums a lot, just one or two at the time, because it's just a really cutesy way of journaling just a little bit. Like if this book is gonna be about one subject, you can tell what that subject is. You know, like this is my dog latte, you know, these are photos of her growing up, or these are her, you know, her first year photos, and this was the year it was, you know, just whatever you want to put on here. So this is a fun way to use stickers. What I like to do on this one is I wanted to add a fun little border to it. So I turned my library card upside down and on the bottom part of the library card, where it's straight and the straight part of the sticker, I just lined those two up and stuck it down. And then to get this off, I just kind of got close to it, but not exact, and just trim it off to get it away from the sticker sheet. And then I turned it over and actually trimmed right up to the edge. And that gives it just this fun little border, a little bit of color, just add something to it until I do my journaling. And then what you want to do is pick out one of these really cutesy sayings here. If anything, um, fits or catches your eye or fits your mood of what you want to put in your album. The first time I put, this is the year. I thought that was good. Let's celebrate. There's some that says life is perfect. There's another one that says this is a year. Love this beautiful life. That's the one I used here the first time. Love this beautiful life. And I guess that's my favorite saying because that's the one I want to use again. This time we'll use this. And then I'm just gonna place it right on top of the border sticker I just put down. And then I'm just gonna put it flush with the right side just to add a little something extra. And then after I do some journaling, I might come back and put some more on here. 
or some on the back, but that's how I'm gonna get started. So I'm gonna put that to the side. So let's look at this four by eight here. Um, I wanna put, let me see, is it a four by six photo that'll go here? Probably, I think I wanted to put a three by five and just kind of uh, trim it down a little bit because I wanna do more decorating. And I am on the top of page 24, if you're wondering on these. So I use leftovers, you know, to mat. So let's cut some strips. Look through your leftover pieces, what you've got now. We basically have used what we're going to use a pattern paper. This is what we had left. We cut a little strip off of this. I have this and this, and I have these little pieces here. So not a whole heck of a lot, but we'll use these to make um, our booklets and, um, and this one. So I, I'm a sucker for heart, so I think I have you know a little bit of heart paper left. I'm gonna use that. And I'm going to cut, mm, let's see, heart paper, one inch and then a quarter of an inch strips. All right, that's probably what it, kind of what I had left. That's probably why I did that. I don't have a little bit left, so I'm going to do an inch here. I have a tiny piece left, but I'm gonna get about a quarter of an inch there. So there's those two pieces. This is all I've got left of my little heart paper. And then I need to trim them down to the size of, uh, I'm gonna say my mat, but the size of my um, tag. And it's four inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that to four inches. Okay. Got these little pieces left. And I'm just using, this is not in your kit, but I always keep these three by five index cards and four by six index cards. I get them when the kids go back to school dirt cheap and then stamp on them. I think I showed you this in one of my last videos. And I just keep these to the side of me when I'm working on a project. But you will have this, but you can cut down a three by five photo or you don't even have to put one on this. It's just kind of using it for a sample. And what I wanna do is I want my hearts to go up here and just kind of put it right near the very tippy top of the tag. And then also on the bottom here. So my tag's not quite four inches, is it? No, it's like three and seven eighths. That's okay, I will trim it down in a second. And then you've got plenty of room here to put a three by five or a four by six photo. Let me try the four by six. Yeah, that must have been what I was thinking. Yeah, because that fits right there. Yeah, isn't that perfect? Right there, you just had to trim it down just a smidge. And then you put a couple of stickers here and then put some washi tape there. Let me show you the finished one. Here, so. Like on this side here. Here, I put a little piece of washi. There's my four by six. I should've just got my sample out to begin with. And then there's a couple of the leftover ephemera pieces. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it. And then I can just trim off that eighth of an inch with scissors. This is not a lot to trim off. And like I say, if you don't wanna put anything for a placeholder right now with the photo, it'd be really easy not to have to. And then just push this up right to the top, right? Just don't make sure you're not covering up your hole. And I'm just gonna use this four by six to make sure it gives me a pretty good place. I kind of know where I want this to land. So I put that in the right spot. Okay, and then I don't have to leave it there if I don't want to. There. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna trim it off. Cute. And I'm gonna dig back down into the die cuts that I had left over. So there were a couple of parts left. Maybe, where's my leftovers? If not, I know that there's plenty of hearts that we had in sticker form. There we go. Put 
those are the ones I actually used, these two parts that were left over in the ephemera pack. So the pink one was a little bit bigger, so I put it down first. I'm a sucker for hearts. Is there anybody else like that? I love hearts. I love old keys. Um, I was thinking the other day, I love the letter L. I love, I have a favorite number that has to do with my birthday. That's cute. And, and cameras. I'm gonna try to combine those into something sometime soon. Just not sure what. And not a tattoo, because I'm scared of pain. <laughs> So I'm going back over here to my washi tape. If you have a favorite month, you might want to be selective. If there's this month here was like September, you might just want to use you know this little September piece and put it down here like it's holding it on. But then I would put some glue behind this here. Or if you just like to have very colorful and have a longer strip, then I'll put that down right here. So let's talk about the other side of this, what I did. I used leftovers for it too. So let's see what leftovers we have gotten here. So I have these dots. This time I'm going to be smarter and do three and seven eighths. If I know where there if I know where that is on my on my trimmer. Oh yeah, that's much better. I want to trim it off. Then, let's see, I'm not following my own cutting guide. It says use three inch, and that's kind of what I had. I got a little bit less than three inch there. And let's see, pink and white. This is kind of what I've got left. Let's see what I have left. I have this dot left. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but this is kind of what I've got left of what I have used. And I'm going to just trim down. I'm going to go with the blue. Three and seven eighths. I don't have any pink and white, but I need about four inches. Here. See how we've used just about every single piece. So now this goes here, just like so, and then this goes up here, and then I would do about a half of an inch or about three eighths of an inch of some color to pull those together. Let's see, I've got so much leftovers. Let's dig around in this, because all we need is a small strip, like that, that might do. I'm just gonna go with the hearts. Cut it to three and seven eighths. And I'm going to work from the bottom up because if I have some left on the top of the tag, it's no big deal. It's gonna act, it's gonna look fine no matter how far up I go on the tag, but I do want the bottom to be covered. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and go flush at the bottom here. And then I'm probably just gonna go ahead and put my hearts down and then butt this up. Yes, and I still don't cover up my hole even though I'm not putting in any um, ribbon. I don't wanna cover the hole up so it still has the look of a tag. Is anybody else surprised that I haven't used ribbon in this? project because you know I'm known for using it I love that uh, seam binding type half inch ribbon and I, I just decided to do something different this time but don't worry it'll definitely be back probably the next one all right so I'm gonna trim this up I gotta clean my scissors it's all sticky so isn't this adorable 
This is the one I was thinking, yeah, that I put like, I thought would be fun to have the three by five photo here and then use a piece of ephemera left, which I really like. This flamingo is what I had here. So isn't that cute? You put like a photo there in the picture flamingo. If you wanted to go ahead, I'm just going to uh, put it down with just dots on the side. That way I can come back later and rip it off if I want to. I don't have to, I could glue over it, but I could and it's not gonna hurt anything. And then, well, come here. So I didn't want him to just be floating in the air like this. So let me look at my other one. I think I use like just strips of leftovers. I did. I don't know why I run out of pink. I just kind of use either stickers or strips of leftovers for him to be sitting on or her. So all this, all these little teeny tiny pieces that you have left. I'm just gonna pick one. Oh, I like that. I'm not gonna use the flowers. I'm gonna use the little things here, and then we'll go to the bottom with it. Like that, almost like a colorful ground for him to stand on. And then when I'm done, I can go back and add hearts since I'm a heart fiend or, or add some flowers. This is fun to have a couple of flowers. There, oh, just like there on the edge, that's adorable. Let's see if I got something that will go on the other side. Maybe, maybe we'll do something like this. Nope, I want flowers. Thought myself right out of that, or a leaf. That's cute. And then I'm just gonna put glue mainly on his legs and on the very bottom so that I don't get glue on this little white photo mat. Because like I say, I want to be either to be able to put my photo in there later or be able to rip it off one or the other. Isn't this cute? I love building tags. You can tell it's like one of my favorite things to do. So, what have we got left on the inside here? I'm sorry we've been going almost an hour. I'm just having fun. So, when we come back, we're going to build these little photo mats. So, this is the 4 by 6 one because it's going to go in here like this. And since this is taller, I'm going to stick it like this because I want the color to stand out. Because that's kind of where I want this to look. So, we put these two in. So, we've got to make that. And then we've got to make the one for the 5 by 7 here on the front that folds out and you've got to actually put the pages in, which is simple, simple, simple. And I think I want to put a couple photos in here, maybe do it just a little bit more matting. So, or put some photos. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. If you're loving this series, or even if you like it a teeny tiny bit, go ahead and hit that like button. If you make one of these, I want to see it. Please join my Facebook group, Lisa Wise Designs. The link's in the description below. And thank you guys for being here and, and being so kind and sweet to me in this creativity process. Okay, see you guys here back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Bye.